Now, this heaven's music on a really, what kind of music is it? So let's look at the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 13 and 13. Please someone read.
But when iniquity was found in him, someone else had to take his place as he was thrown out. What does the spirit of prophecy say? Satan, Satan led the heavenly choir. He ra had raised the first notes, then all the angelic hosts had united with him, and glorious strains of music had resounded through heaven in honor of God and his dear son. But then Satan, when he heard that God's son should be worshipped, he wasn't feeling happy because he thought that God himself should be worshipped. He started getting pride and said, I, should be, I will be like the most high. You can find that in the book of Isaiah. And so he refused to worship Jesus and that's why he fell and lost his position of being the choir director of the angels. Satan, a talented music, musician, was the master of music. So you think that you can defeat Satan with this keyboard thing and trying to play godly songs? No! Satan has created those some instruments for a reason so that he may people might play music, even though it has Christian words in it, as they call it gospel music, but it is actually praised to what? Satan or self. Satan was the master of music. That's why you can see all these uh, instruments here are not used for the praise of God. They're used for the praise of who? The devil. In the book, of, in the book uh, Life Sketches of James White, 1870, he says, What a blessing is talent and voice and taste for singing, and how with a sanctified use of it you may glorify God. But the devil has almost entire what? Control over nearly every good singer. And there are more souls sung to hell than are prayed to who? To heaven. heaven. Therefore, this is a very important statement. The devil has almost entire control over nearly every good singer. If you don't guard the avenues of your mind, you might find you're going down that road to hell by the songs you're singing. You can go to church on the Sabbath all you like. You can do all the good things that are said in the Bible all you like. But music, Satan can easily defeat you if you do not guard the avenues of your mind. Now, who gave Lucifer his talent for music? Let's see. Music's true origin has its true origin in God and the worship of God. So music didn't originate in uh, in the earth. It originated in heaven. How the angels would sing holy, holy, holy Lord God of mighty. Let's go to the book of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. And I want to ask you a question. If music originated in heaven, then really, for the worship of God, that means God can sing. Let's prove that from the Bible. What does it say? Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. Yes. He will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. He will joy over thee with what? Singing. So the creator of the earth, who made your voice box, can he not sing? Yes, he can. That's why he made your voice box. If he made his, your voice box, then and he doesn't know how to sing, that voice box would be useless because he wouldn't know how to create it and how it will work. That's why the book of Zephaniah 3.17 says that the Lord will rejoice over thee with singing. Music's true origin has, music has its true origin in the, in God and the worship of God. We have proved that from Zephaniah 3.17. Let's go to the book of Psalms 119.7. I told you I'm going to use the Bible and the spirit of prophecy only. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119 verse 7. What does it say? 119 verse 7. <coughs> yes. The Bible says, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When, when, I, when I shall have learned the, the, righteous, the righteous judgment. When I shall have had thy righteous judgment. So we should praise God with the uprightness of heart. We shouldn't praise God like this. We shouldn't praise God with such beats. Because if we praise Him with those kinds of beats, then we are not really praising God because those things originated from the devil. Now, what 
what do you think is praise music? Do you think this is praise music? Tell me, is this praise music? No. Bless you. Psalms 19 verse 7, sorry. Psalms 119 verse 7 says, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. So, I will praise who? God. With uprightness of heart when I should have learned his righteous judgment. Now, which praise the music is this? All praise goes to someone. Either God, self, or the devil. Now, I want to show you two kinds of praise and worship. I want you to tell me which one is the correct one. What do you think about praise and worship? Do you think it's that or this? Tell me, which one? This or this? The first or the second one? Second one. This one. Not this one. But there's, there's so much praise and worship, this kind of praise and worship in our church. And it's not just with a whole drum kit. With this keyboard, it can create a whole band from just a few batteries are connected to the power. That's why the best way to praise God if you want these kinds of uh, instruments, use a piano, a violin, those things which you cannot syncopate with. Because with those things, it's very hard to syncopate with a piano or a violin or the other instruments that are even recorded in the Bible. But these kind of uh, instruments, you can't find it even in the spirit of prophecy. They are all for the work of the devil. Is music to be a part of, of the worship of God? Let's see. Education, page 168 says, as, as a part of religious service, singing is as much an act of worship as is? Prayer. Let us repeat. As a part of religious service, singing is as much an act of worship as is? Prayer. Indeed, many, song is, many a song is a prayer. If the child is taught to realize this, he will think more of the meaning of the words he sings and will be more susceptible to their power. He starts singing, holy, 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 instead of let it go, let it go. Those are kind of satanic songs that should not even be found in the, the mouth of the adult. The songs you should be singing are hymns and not those secular songs that you find in cartoons. How should music be used in the part of in the worship of God? Let's see. Evangelism page five or seven says music forms a part of God's worship in the courts above. We should endeavor in our songs of praise to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of the heavenly choirs. Let's say it together. We, we should endeavor in our songs of praise to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of the heavenly choirs. So we shouldn't be singing songs with beats that would make you, the, some people call them feel good songs. They make you feel good, but they do not please the Father. Because song, songs are to praise God and not to praise yourself. Remember I said that all music, all praise goes to either Jesus, self, or the, the yeah. devil. So how should music be used in the worship of God? It should sound heavenly rather than earthly. Why, should, why am I saying this? Evangelism page 512. Music is acceptable to God only when the heart is sanctified and made soft and holy by its facilities. No matter how much you do to help in God's work, no matter how many churches you might build or set up, if you do not have uh, good music, sorry, if you do not have music that is acceptable to God, and if your soul has not been justified, all that is nothing. Amen. You would have used your money for something else than to buy a new but Mercedes Benz. Praise <laughs> But many who delight in music know nothing of making melody in their hearts to the Lord. Those who sing songs that make themselves feel good are actually not pleasing the, the no. Father. Because if they are pleasing themselves, you cannot serve God and mammon. So you can't please yourself and please God. At the same time, you have to please one, God or yourself or the devil. So, number two, it should draw our thoughts and affections heavenward rather than earthward. earthward. Music should be, the, our main theme songs today, like this, in these last days, is how to prepare ourselves 
for the coming of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be singing songs that are not really for our time. We should be singing songs about the coming of Christ and how to prepare for it. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 1. <coughs> if you are there, please read. Exodus 15 verse 1. Yes, what does it say? Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, yes. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed, and he has triumphed gloriously. Yes. The horse and his rider yes. are he thrown into the sea. Yes. The Lord is my strength yes. and a song, and he is and he is become my salvation. Yes, the Lord is my strength and my what? My song, and he is my salvation. So when we sing songs that do not really praise God, they don't see that God is our strength and our song, or Jesus is coming again, we should prepare. Those songs are meaningless, they're useless. You'd rather even uh, not sing and use your voice for something else. Psalms 149 verse 1, whoever is that please read. What does he say? 1 verse 1. Uh-huh. 1 verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Praise ye the Lord, and sing unto him a new song, and praise him in the congregation. Isn't it? Yes. Yes, don't just go and say, I'm going to sing this song alone, even though it's a hymn, I'll sing it alone, and in the congregation of song afterward. No, let's see what the spirit of prophecy says. Singing is not always to be done by a few. As often as possible, let the entire congregation join. If you know the song, join with them in singing. Because all of us are to sing and praise the Lord God in heaven. For his wondrous works. That is Testimonies, volume 4, page 49, sorry, page 144. Singing should be should not be done by a few only. All present should be encouraged to join in the song service. Evangelism, page 507. Now, how should music be used in the worship of God? As often as possible, let's read it together. Everyone should join in the singing. Not only a soloist or one person. Everyone should join in the singing. But now, what type of music should be used in the Worship of God. Can you see a keyboard near there? Huh? Yeah. This is a piano. There is no keyboard here. Yeah, that's piano. This is a what we call a grand piano. And what is this? A drum kit. Yeah. Now this is used for Satan's worship and this is used for God's worship. So which one should be used in the worship of God? Yeah. The classical music, not the pop rock that goes <laughs> that makes you feel good and you feel as if you're going to dance. Those kinds of music calls the devil. I'll show you in one of the quotes, but that's not even by Adventist, but he knows. Carlisle, Carlisle Manos, Christians and Music. The question of music being what may be called the upper division topic demands a great deal of spiritual maturity. For as Paul says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. Confessions of a former worship leader, page 557. This is Dan Bukarini. I am now convinced that God will not accept our worship when it is offered with music styles that are used by what? Pagans for their immoral practices. He is a jealous God. If you grasp this principle alone, it will change you forever the way you lead a worship service. Amen. Amen. Charis Charisma Magazine, February 1994. Today, praise music has entered the mainstream. Songs that were only sung in charismatic churches a few years ago are, are now heard through mainline and non-charismatic churches. Howard Ross the Winds of the Change, page 212. Shortly after it began to emerge in 1901, Pentecostalism sends through some strange form of intuition that success would come through emotionally charged music. 
I told you that, that the devil will only capture you and stop you from getting to heaven, not by disobeying God's commandments, but through music. Music is the only thing that the devil, the only, one of the only tools that the devil now can use to draw you from the narrow path and go into the wide path straight to hell. The first pattern was called what? Jazz. Jazz. Speaking of the years 1901 to 1914, Howard Goss said, Without jazz, the Pentecostal movement would never have made the rapid inroads into the hearts of men and women as it did. Neither could we have experienced a constant, victorious revival over the 50 years. It was generally not the conventional church hymn singing of that era, entirely unpretentious. There appeared to be neither poetry or musicianship in the composition, but there was something far more effective than either. We were the first, so far as I know, to introduce this accelerated tempo into what singing? Gospel singing. Gospel singing, not pagan singing. It was already entered our church. What sound church music? Christianity Today, 19 May, 1978, by Bruce Leafblad. Much contemporary church music is shaped by more what values? Secular values than by the theological principles. Commercial interests rather than spiritual objectives motivate much sacred music. Now, this is not done by an Adventist or by a reformer or even a Seventh-day Baptist. No, this was done by atheists who don't even know what the Godhead is. Or they don't even believe in the Trinity or Godhead. They don't believe in God at all. Yeah, what are they writing? Commercial interests rather than spiritual objectives motivate much sacred what? Music. music. Church music is often aimed at satisfying a popular music taste Musical taste at the expenses of a balanced ministry designed to meet a variety of spiritual needs. Many of the basic and unbiblical assumptions and objectives of the entertainment industry are eroding an already thin concept of ministry through what? Music. Look at this word. What is it? Entertainment. 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 So that music is made for you to feel good, not for it to please the, the Father. It is used to please the devil and you yourself. All means, all praise goes to either God, self, or the devil. Contemporary music, uh, Christian music and worship by Jeffrey K. Lauritsen. The problem appears to be that music continues as a major area of church life, largely untouched by biblical theology. This fact should make what? Seventh-day Adventist nervous. This fact should make what? Seventh-day Adventist what? Nervous. nervous. Psalms 119 verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Testimonies volume 5, page 500. Now this is the prophet. Unless correct ideas of true worship and true reverence are impressed upon the people, there will be a growing tendency to place the sacred and eternal on a level with common things. And those professing the truth will be an offense to God and a disgrace to what? Religion. Religion. Christian music, like Christianity itself, has a refining influence, but cheap music produces a cheap what? Religion. But both both cheap music and cheap religion are superficial and will not produce a character change. Who is this talking? Dr. Eurydice V. Osterman. Now, is this an Adventist? Is he? No, but he knows the truth. We are all sleeping in the church and we don't know the truth and here it is with the atheists. We should be ashamed of ourselves that the atheists know more than us. He says again, therefore, the only infallible guide that will lead one to determine what is good Christian music are the Holy Spirit and unwavering principle. Now, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, what does it say? Whatsoever? Finally, brethren, 
normal. Benefits of classical music. At Louisiana State University, researchers found that listening to hard driving rock music has increased the heart rate as well as lowered the quality of physical workouts in a group of 24 young adults. When calming music was played, what happened? Yeah, their heart rate lowered, which allowed for longer training sessions. So it lowers blood pressure, then it lowers stress and reduces cortisol. Let's see. How rock, the rock beat be, creates an addiction. How to conquer the addiction to rock music, page 82. One of the most powerful releases of the fight or flight adrenal, adrenaline hype is music, which is discordant in its beats or what? Of course. Good music follows exact mathematical rules, which cause which causes the mind to feel comforted, encouraged, and safe. When you're counting, that, now this is something that, this is a lot of baby work that you might say. When you're counting, like, uh, let's go back to that song. Oops. Let's count the beat. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Now that song, when you count the rhythm, it always starts at the first note. <coughs> but now if we go to this other song. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Makes you feel as if you're going to dance. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You see, the music does not start on the first note. It starts on which note? The fourth note. Now when you're counting, you start four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you start like that? No, you start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you tell someone the way to count uh, rhythm is four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, people will be acting, looking at you as if you're crazy. But that is what the rock music does. It makes you act as if you're a baby. You do not know how to count the rhythm of the music. <laughs> It lowers stress, reduces cortisol. Listening to classical choral, Kretz et al. 2004 medita meditative, meditative Mokel et al. 1994 and folk music, Fukui 2003, has been shown to induce significant reductions of cortisol values in health adults. Whereas significant increases were noted in listeners who are exposed to techno, Gera et al. 1998, and upbeat pop and rock music, Brownlee et al. 1995. The stress hormone, cortisol, is public health and enemy number what? Number one. Did you know that rock music, when it increases your cortisol, that is the easiest way to get cancer. If you want to die, listen to rock music every day, every hour, every minute, every second. You get cancer in less than a week. <laughs> Sorry. Scientists have known for years that elevated cortisol levels interfere with what? Learning, Learning and memory. Now when we give our children uh, music to listen to, oh this is good music, you should listen to it, it is gospel music, what people call Christian rock, then you actually spoil that going to school you'd rather use that school fees for something else. Because it will be all nothing. The teacher is trying to teach someone, or if you're homeschooling, even. You try to teach the child, the child can't get the lesson because too much rock music. Lower immune function and bone density. Rock, if you want uh, bone setting, listen to rock music. <laughs> Increased weight gain, blood pressure, cholesterol, and disease. If you want a stroke, rock music is the best solution. And the list goes on and on. Chronic stress and elevated cortisol.
cortisol levels as a potential trigger for mental illness and decreased resilience, especially in adolescence. That is where most children get their phones. Now it's the phone getting period is coming lower and lower and lower until the child is able to read, he'll be getting a phone. Music and cortisol. Significant increases in cortisol when listening to upbeat pop and rock music. Depression in the teenage depression. Depression is the number one cause of illness and disability in adolescents worldwide. If you want to, uh, to have a medical missionary experience of bone setting and uh, how to uh, unclog the arteries, listen to all the rock music you want. You'll be like this teenage person right here. Depressed, you're wondering what will I do? I spent all my money on CDs about rock music that is not useful. You will end up wasting all that money for nothing. High school and college students are five to eight times as likely to suffer from depressive symptoms as were teenagers 50 or 60 years ago. Those 50 or 60 years ago, this was in 2010. When was that? Let's take the 50 years 60. ago. 1960. 1960. Chronic stress and elevated cortisol levels, we read that. The likelihood of major depression among Pentecostals was three times greater than among persons with other affiliations. Did you know which is worse, rock music or the cigarette? Rock music. The cigarette will destroy your lungs, but rock music will destroy your whole body and it will destroy one of the most important organs, the heart. How? Let's see. It lowers stress, reduces cortisol. A Temple University researcher's study on the effects of rock music showed that the university students exposed to recordings by the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, and the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, ETC, breathed faster, had reduced skin resistance to stimuli, stimuli and had increased what? Heart rate. Increased what? Heart, Heart rate. rate. Compared to those exposed to background noise. Your heartbeat changes and mimics the music you listen to. Can you see this? What is this? What is this? Heart rate. What is this? Heartbeat. Tell me, this is not uh, those things for measuring heartbeat. This is a cable. A jumping. This is what it does to your heart. Your heartbeat is irregular. It's an irregular heartbeat. Your heartbeat can, you know, my, you know, it normally does. But now, when you listen to rock music, you increase its work, and therefore, it has less time to repair itself, uh, repair uh, all the things, all the problems in it, and it has less time. That's why you could easily get cardiac disease very easily. Music and stress hormones. John Hopkins researchers found that listening to rock music causes people to eat faster and to eat a larger volume of food. Can you see all this food here? That's a lot of food. That is enough food for 10 people. <laughs> Classical music, especially slow string music, makes them eat more slowly and consume less. How many have heard of fast food restaurants? A fast food restaurant gets more money than a restaurant with 100 people. A fast food restaurant with 10 people gets more money than a common restaurant with 100 people. Why? Not because of the rates. The rates are the same. But the music causes people to eat faster and eat a larger volume of food. And then when you go home, you say you have food poisoning and vomit out all that food. You did not have food poisoning. You ate too much. Too quickly. One of the most powerful releases of the fight or flight adrenal line high is music which is discordant in its beats of chord. Good music follows exact mathematical rules which cause the mind to feel comforted, encouraged, and safe. Musicians have found that when they go against these rules, the listener experiences an addictive what? High. As in all addiction, victims become tolerant. The same music that once created a pleasant tingle of excitement no longer satisfies. The music must become more jarring, louder and more discordant. One starts with soft rock, then rock and roll, 
then up to heavy metal music. Now you see this guy? He's crazy. Can't see the way he's running, the way he's playing the guitar shows that he's not well in the head. Why? The rock music has spoiled this part of his body. Here. Musical rhythms affect both our hearts and our brains. One road to arousing a range of agitated feelings, tense, excited, is through pronounced and insistent rhythms. Drumming may produce these powerful effects by actually driving the brain's electrical rhythm. Now this is not a Seventh Day Adventist. This is not a Adventist world, as bad as it is. This is a hidden uh, magazine. Those ones that you go and buy in the supermarket. Whatever disturbs the circulation of the electrical currents in the nervous system lessens the strength of the vital powers and the result is a deadening of the sensibilities of the mind. Now this is Councils of Health, page 616. Now if Ellen White had this rock music in her time, what about now? It's much more worse. Benefits of classical music, it lowers stress and reduces cortisol. It improves sleep quality. Now, let me, ask, let me uh, do something about this improved sleep quality. When you sing to the baby a lullaby, you sing a rock song. <laughs> no, you sing classical music. And that's what the baby, what makes the baby go to sleep as easily. But if you start playing for some, the baby the rock song, the baby will be awake the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> it improves mental alertness and memory. Now, in one of the universities in America, some people have uh, uh, put some mice, not even people, mice. Some which were listening to rock music and others which were listening to classical music in their cage. Now, they, they didn't blend it. They put the mice in a maze and put the, uh, some cheese at the end of the maze. For each cage, there was its own maze. Only the ones with classical music found them, the cheese the fastest. The ones with rock music looked and looked and looked for it. And finally, after a very long time, more than a day, they found the cheese. At that time, they were half starved. That is what rock music can do. It, improved, uh, it does not improve mental and alertness and memory. It destroys mental alertness and memory. So the four principles of, the four benefits of classical music. It lowers blood pressure, blood pressure reduces stress and cortisol, improves sleep quality, improves mental alertness and memory. Now you see this. What is this? Church hymn. Where is it found? Is it, isn't it very rare? Mm. Which hymnals are here nowadays? The Seventh-day Adventist hymn. Now that Seventh-day Adventist hymn is that not uh, uh, the correct, uh, not, it's not really a Seventh-day Adventist hymn. Is a deceptive hymnal because may, many of the songs in that Seventh-day Adventist hymnal have a rock beat syncopated, though they don't say that you have to use it with a band. They can see you can use it with a piano or a keyboard as long as it's syncopated. What type of music should be used in the worship of God? Classical or pop rock? Now I've cancelled a pop rock to show that classical is the best music in the worship of God. Maranatha, page 234. The things you have described, the Lord has shown me, would take place just before the close of probation. Let, let me say it in an easier way. The things you have described, the Lord has shown me, would take place just in 2018. Every account thing will be just demonstrated. They will be shouting with what? Drums, music and what? Dancing. Few good songs have all of these. Maranatha, page 234. The, sense of, the senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such method, methods, in such a bedlam of noise. You might be a seven-day Adventist who professes to believe that there is no God, the Holy Spirit, but when you start with this bedlam of noise, you might find yourself telling people, I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And people will be saying, is this Misati? <laughs> this is an invention of Satan to counteract his ingenious methods for making 
of non-effect the pure, the sincere, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truth for this time. A bedlam of noise shocks the senses and perverts that which, if conducted aright, must might be a blessing. Amen. The powers of satanic agencies blend with the din and noise. I told you that earlier that when you play this kind of music, you call the demons, but you'll see that from an atheist now if you don't believe me. The powers of satanic agencies blend with the din and noise to have a carnival, and if this is termed the Holy Spirit working. Now, once, once I'm done with this presentation, please don't go outside and say, Misati said this, Misati said this, or Misati said that. This is from the book Man and Other, Spirit of Prophecy and the Bible only. <laughs> Immoral music. A choir singing religious rock was asked what effect this type of music had on them. The youth responded, it turns us on sexually, just like any other type of rock. Now here, Demon Possession and Music by Dr. Juanita McElwain. The same exact rhythms are used in each of the three religions. Let's read it together. In African and Indian music. Let's say that again. In African and Indian music. In rock music. And in music used in the meetings of what? Of what? Maybe I should say it a bit better. In African and Indian music. In rock music. And in music used in the meeting of the health reformers of wrong. <laughs> the demon comes whenever he is called by anyone using those rhythms. Inside rock music page 2. Does the demon come to celebration type worship services when the demon's rhythm is played in Christian rock music? Even though the people present, present don't realize that they are calling a demon, there is quite, quite a strong consensus that the demon does come. Now, many people who listen to rock music, they might get uh, possessed by demons and people will be wondering why. Because many people here I know, they think that demons come just like that. That person made a covenant with the devil without even knowing it. The person listened to this kind of rock music and by that day, he made a covenant with the devil because that is the devil's worship service. So the devil came into him. It's just like the same as telling the devil, you Satan, come to me, come to me right now. My heart is open. I'm playing your worship service. I'm worshiping you. Come, come. That is what you do when you play rock music. The rhythm is more important than the meaning of the words. Our God, we respond to the rhythm among all else. Who are these? These are Brazilians. Have this come to Kenya? It is right here. Martha Bailey is whole in our souls. The loss of beauty and meaning in American popular music page 130. Well, the first blacks from where? Oh, Africa were converted to Christianity. They knew the power and evil influence of drums. The converted blacks strictly forbid the use of drums. They refer to the drums of the work drum. The devil's drum. But what has happened to us now? We are backslidden. We are now allowing the drums to come. In our manufacturers, if there are any keyboard manufacturers in Kenya, they add the 16 beats, the 8 beats in the keyboard, and all those other beats that you can find there. This is the wrong thing to use for the worship of God. You either get a piano or use your voices. <coughs> so how should music be used in the worship of God? Evangelism page 5 or 7, the, sing the singing should not be done by a few only. Let's read together. All present should be encouraged to join in the song, in the song service. That doesn't mean that even if you don't know the song, you don't need to really now sit back and say, uh, this song is for praise to God, I don't need to listen to it, me, I can go on my phone and start seeing well, how was the service in Nairobi, what happened, who was preached, no. Listen and try to learn the song, so that if that song has a chorus, if the chorus comes, you may be able to join in the song and praise God for your voice will be accounted in the day of judgment. What did you do with your voice? Patricia Preston Roberts, music therapist in New York. Students have linked singing with a lower heart rate, decreased blood pressure, and reduced stress. Now, is this cat playing a keyboard? 
Is that a keyboard? Is that a keyboard? No. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Singing also seems to block a lot of the neural pathways that pain travels through. If you're on a pain killer, listen to rock music. If you're on bone setting, listen to rock music. If you're on high blood pressure, cardiac disease, cardiac failure, rock music. Then you know what pain is. Levine School of Music in Washington, D.C. Now this is in America. 30 fewer doctor visits, fewer eyesight problems. Now when children stop listening to rock music, less incidence of depression, less need for what? Medication. medication. That means even uh, medical missionary education. Medication. You do not need it when you don't listen to rock music. Fewer what? Fewer what? Falls and other injuries. Are we together? The Telegraph News, UK, May 11, 2009. Sing your way to what? To happiness. Happiness. Choral singing is not only fun. It offers an antidote to stress, illness, and depression. Now, this is not the problem. These are secular guys who say that it, it offers an antidote to stress, illness, and depression. What is an antidote? Tell me. A remedy to stress, illness, and depression. Recent studies have shown singing to be beneficial not only to general health. A University of Pittsburgh survey suggested that regular church attendance extend, extended a person's life by two or three years. And it can help ease the pain of chronic illnesses too. But now, this church, uh, this church attendance is useless now. Why? Because all that you hear there is... You only hear beat. So it actually increases the pain of chronic illnesses. Professor Graham Welch the, of the University of London has done extensive research into singing and its health benefits. When you sing, you breathe in a different way so you use more of your total lung volume. This means there is a tendency to increase the airflow so your blood is more oxy oxygenated. But rock music, the, quite the opposite. When that happens, you are more alert. Singing also exercises the cardiovascular system and gives you the kind of hormonal release that comes from being focused on a task and enjoying the task at the same time. Letter 49, 19 or 2. Ellen White says, Often the singing of simple hymns by the congregation has a charm. By the what? The congregation has a charm that is not possessed by the singing of a choir. However skilled it may be. Even if you have a thousand people in your choir, if the congregation doesn't join, their blood will be upon your head. Evangelism page 5 or 7, we should endeavor in our songs of praise to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of the heavenly choirs. Isaiah 35 verse 10, what does it say? As I close. Yes, what does it say? The Bible says, Yes. And the ransomed of the Lord shall, shall return. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon And shall their come to help Zion with songs and what? Everlasting joy upon their heads. And everlasting joy upon their heads. They Continue. Shall, they shall obtain joy and gladness. They shall obtain joy and gladness. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away because of classical music. Let's go to the book of Revelation 14, verse 2 and 3. What does it say? 14, verse 2. Yes. And I heard a voice from heaven uh -huh. as the voice of many waters. Yes. Okay. Say and I heard a voice from heaven, yes. as the voice of many waters, yes. and as, a, as the voice of a great thunder. Yes. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Harpers harping with their harps, not uh, pianists playing with their keyboards. 
And they sang as it were a new song before the throne. And they sang as it were a new song on the throne. And before the four beasts. And before the four beasts. And the elders. And the elders. And no man could learn that song. And no man could learn that song. But the but the hundred and forty four thousand. But the hundred and forty four thousand. Which were redeemed from the which earth. Which were redeemed from the earth. The other wicked people had too much rock music that would not be playing with a guitar. They might say it's strings. But it would not be played by a harp, but they might say it's strings, but they are playing with a guitar and a drum kit. So really, that music, whether it praises God, whether it says holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, with a rock beat, it is saying the very opposite. The rock beat speaks louder than the world. And chapter 15, verse 2 and 3, it says, Chapter 15, verse 2. Yes. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. Yes. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. Yes. Stand on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. Having the hearts of God, not having the drum kits of God. Uh huh. And they sing the song of Moses and Moses the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Yes. Great and, and marvelous are thy works. Great Lord and marvelous God are thy works. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Saints. Not Father Abraham and many sons. No. Great and marvelous are whose works? God's works. Now, what music will you choose? This music or this music? Tell me. Which one? This one or this one? This one. Okay. Our closing song will be What Heavenly Music, number 452. Amen. 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 Am